What is up? What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? It is Master Wolf, Wolf Pact Gaming. I'm going to teach you how to play TFT. I'm going to teach you how to be good at TFT. And I'm going to explain to you in the 2020 for set four that has just come out for all you people that are like, hey, I want to play TFT now. This is what you need to do. Now, to give you a brief understanding on how TFT works, it's an auto, auto battler game, right? But I want to help you understand in the best way possible. So please, first, like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. And uh, in the description is the link to my Twitch. Uh, please come hang, whatever you want to do. And also the link to my Discord channel. First and foremost, okay... If you were brand new to TFT, the things that I would love to know automatically before TFT, before I played a game, is knowing the synergies. Because when you know the synergies and when you know what is strong and what isn't, it helps you be better at the game, but also understand, okay, this works well with certain comps. So for uh, set four now in 2020, which has just come out, Mage isn't really overly strong. Brawlers are very, very strong, right? What are these? So let's show let's show you exactly what we do here. Let's say we want to pick two heroes or champions, our apologies. What they do is they give us uh, synergies or they give us traits. These traits for specifically Garen, he is a warlord and a vanguard. Now, why there are brackets here with numbers is because that is the amount of champions you need of that same trait or synergy to be able to actually activate this. So as you can see here, Exile only needs one champion with Exile to actually gain that buff of a shield equal to 50% of their maximum health. With Garen, he is a Warlord. Warlords, you need three Warlords on your field to be able to activate 200 health and 20 spell power. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that uh, we're going to do amazing here because I'm trying to explain to you how the game works. But for this, that is how synergies work. I'm trying to concentrate and obviously explain at the same time. Now, one thing I do always recommend to people is getting what's called uh an app or an application called blitz.gg if you type blitz.gg in google it'll give you a download and basically it's an overlay for uh tft it is absolutely amazing to be honest with you i recommend it to everyone I think if you uh, don't have it, you're losing out, to be honest with you. And what it does is it allows you to know combos of what certain items complete into uh, a scripted item. For example, a BF sword and another BF sword gives you a death blade. And it gives you the definition or the description of what that actually does. Uh, BF sword and a glove gives you uh infinity edge which is a very popular item right so there's a lot of things we can do here to help us understand exactly how uh we're going to be better what champions to put these items on you get a full list of the synergies it tells you what the strongest synergies are i see a lot of professional um twitch streamers with this on there some don't some do it's really uh each to their own but that, in a nutshell, is how the game works. You have synergies, you have champions on your field, and you have items. Now, every time a round finishes, you go up to XP. You have a decision whether you want to buy XP for the amount of four gold, or roll for a new set of five champions, which are these here, um, and basically try and get the champions you want. So let me explain this to you now. I have a brawler synergy. I have two brawlers, and what that does is it gives me 400 health. Uh, essentially, I actually have one off a fortune, um, one off a fortune synergy. So what I'm doing now is I'm selling champions that I don't need, because at the end, uh, every time you get to a 10 of a gold, so it, basically I get to 10 gold. What it does is it actually gives me interest, right? So at 
10, I get one extra gold. So I get uh, 11 after an extra one. So watch what happens here. I'm at 10 gold. I'm not going to get 11. I'm going to get my total income of five, right? Because I get interest of one plus passive income. You'll see it now tick over. We could actually buy this. Um, I'm going to buy that quickly just to get Brawler. Uh, so now we get our passive gold. Now we're leveling up. What I'm trying to do here is economize. And this is what uh, everyone in this game calls it your economy. The max amount of interest you can get is at 50 gold. So what you'll see a lot of streamers do, a lot of high tier players, is they actually um, try and get to 50 gold and still maintain a strong side, right? But then at the same time, you know, add the pieces in. So it's sort of like a, a seesaw balance. You're buying champions you need, you're looking um, at what people are going, you're knowing what comp you're going, and then you're slowly building up your economy. Now, where this game can get a bit tricky, and I guess where a good player defers from a master player, is really in knowing when to economize and when to be aggressive and push down or stabilize. What stabilize means is really you're losing a bit of points and you need to spend like 20 or 30 gold to get better units or upgrade your units and become stronger. So that is something you will learn as you play more and more of TFT, right? Now, what you'll see to the right here are the health bars of everyone. At the moment, I am second last. What that means is I actually get the opportunity to... Uh, I should have actually... On that. I get the opportunity to pick a champion with an item on it. Now, generally, what you want to do in these scenarios early game is pick the item, not the champion. Because item combinations and item scripts on certain champions are amazing. For example, Jinx here is very good with an item called Gwinsu, Rage Blade, uh, and Spear of Shoujin, and something like a Quicksilver. So she attacks fast, she gets mana back, and she has CC, or avoid CC, apologies. Now, one of the biggest, or if not the biggest change in set 4 currently, is what we call a chosen champion. To explain this to you guys, a chosen champion is a champion that you will see here this is when this is flickering or this is on your fate is open you can get a chosen champion and what it does is it allows you to get a champion that will have two two synergies of the same kind i'll explain that a bit better so he will he or she that champion will have two synergies but one of those synergies will have two times for example if i just got a chosen brawler here right and it was another brawler, let's say it was, uh, if you can see the on the furthest on the right in the green, there's a champion there, that is Vi. If I got Vi chosen and it was brawler, it would actually put me up to four brawler. So it gives me two of that synergy, and she's also a warlord, so my warlord would go up one. So right here, let's show you, show you for example. I go Jana, I put her in. Now watch what happens on the left. We're going to get two Mystic. Instead of one Mystic, we're going to get two and an Enlightened. Boom. And that is how Chosen works. Now, for my build, I'm not going to be going Jana. Although, I do love Jana. We're not going to be going her. Um, so, choo choo choo. Uh, but basically, let's run that. We're going to get a Sharpshooter bonus now because our the Nidalee we just got is a warlord and a sharpshooter we already had a sharpshooter so that's going to give us two sharpshooter this game is really about understanding the synergies the comps when to level up when to economize how strong your comp is and the biggest one of the biggest and if not the most important things about this game that a lot of low tier players don't do is scouting so what is scouting? I use my one and three or my keyboard number one and three, and I can actually see what everyone's comp is. I can see here, Moonlight Enlightened, Warlord Brawler, Moonlight Brawler again, 
Julius Devine, Warlord, Warlord Vanguard, Brawler. Let's pause here. I wanted to go Brawler. This guy's going Brawler, and he's got a chosen Brawler. You have two decisions to make here. Either you can contest him and still go Brawler, or you can pivot. What does pivot mean? Pivot means that you are going from one synergy or one certain base comp to a completely different one. In in pivot, uh, uh, sorry, in basketball, a pivot actually means to like smooth, go back, back and forth. You're holding one foot down and you're turning. You're going back, 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 back. So really, pivoting means to change to something else. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do like sort of like a mini pivot. It's not a huge pivot, but because I've scouted, because I've seen that he is going brawler, I've decided I'm not going brawler, brawler anymore. We also know that someone uh, is going warlord, so I'm not going to contest that. You still can contest it. Generally, people don't. What I haven't noticed or what I've seen that people haven't gone is cultist. And look what I just got, cultist. So what are we going to do? We're going to chuck this in. We're going to get a cultist buff. Oops, sorry. We're going to get two of cultist. All we need is one more cultist and we are flying high, ladies and gentlemen. So what are we going to do now? We've got all this money on the bench. Do we keep it? The answer is no. We create more income. We sell. We sell. We're going to keep this because we're one off leveling that brawler up. We're going to sell and we're going to sell. So now we're over 40 gold and we have interest of four gold. So guess what? Next round, we're going above 50. We're flying high in the stars. Let's see where this pivot takes us. I've, I've scouted the map. I've seen what people are going. I've got items that I can use. I get a cultist. Guess what? I now have a cultist synergy with sharpshooter, which is amazing because this uh, guy here, Jin, is a cultist sharpshooter. He is a tier four. Also, what you would need to understand in TFT, and this again comes with experience, is that you have certain percentages and certain levels of champions. Break, pause, if you need to, go back, understand what I've said before. I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to actually uh, put some items on him. I'm going to make Jin my carry, uh, right? And we're just going to hold that. We're going to put this on Elise. And basically what I've done now is I'm itemizing. A lot uh, of high tier players will itemize and put items on champions straight away. And what you'll see them do uh, is actually put items on heroes that they're going to sell and then transfer those scripted items uh, so basically what they'll do is they'll buy like a random hero, they'll put it in, or they'll use it here. They'll put the, the two items together, right? So they'll go like this, they'll put both on, and then it'll make the script and they'll sell it, and then they've got it there. Basically, that's what you can do also. Back to the levels of uh, the champions. So you have, to make it easy for you, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, and tier 5. Now, one is gray, two is green, three is blue, uh, four, tier four is purple, and legendary or tier five is, yes, you guessed it, uh, yellow. Now, what does this mean? What do these percentages mean? These percentages mean this is the percentage or chance out of 100% of you rolling a specific tier one champion out of these five or out of this row of champions so if i was to refresh or re-roll down right now i would have a 45 percent chance of landing a tier one champion so on and so forth what a lot of people do in this game is if their carry is based around let's say tier two or i don't know what i need to get i've lost my mind oh no i'll get this okay uh, we'll put GA on him. 
So basically, they will get to the point where their tier champion that they want to invest and they want to use as their main carry, when they get to the highest point of percentage for them, they're going to either roll down or slow roll. This is going to take some learning. Let me show it to you here. Okay. I'm going to sell this. I'm going to level up. Now, let's say the champion that I wanted to make my carry was a tier two, a green. Let's see what happens when I level up here. The percentages are swapped. Now, I have a 35% chance to get any tier two champion like that. And guess what? I don't need a tier two champion. So that's fine. But we could roll down here, right? And try and get something just to give us a bit of boost which can be that ash and again my carry is a tier 4 champion so we are trying to get this percentage up fairly high the comp that i'm running because i've seen people not go it uh, or basically it's been as they say left open is cultist what cultist does is basically once my team loses 50 percent a galio is summoned slamming into the largest cluster of enemies it's actually quite strong we're getting cultists all over we want to get six cultists um and we just hit six cultists so look what happens now we go up to six now instead of getting tyrant galio we get Demon Lord Galio. Although our comp becomes maybe possibly a bit weaker, the aim is for us to get nine cultists. I hope this all makes sense for you guys. So now, what am I doing? I've got six, six cultists. I don't have anything really to put in. I'm leveling up. A lot of people don't level up or economize well in this game, and that's when they get caught out. But let's see what happens here. We get a new Galio. You can see him. He's ready for action. He's ready to drop in. Kabam! And we're likely to win this one. So basically, what we're doing now is we are leveling up. If we get any champions that we need, we'll buy them, add them to the bench, and then slowly get up levels. Our aim with this specific synergy is to get a really good level on this guy and get to nine cultists. Our, our specific aim is to get to nine cultists. Now, how does leveling work? If I get three of the same champion, they become level two. So this here, oh, my voice. This here is three Elises. One, two, and another one. So if I was to get another one, I'd have another one of these tier twos on the bench. How do you get a tier 3 champion, you may ask? You need to have 9 of the same unit. Yes, 9 of the same unit. This can be very challenging, but very rewarding. One of the biggest tips I give to people is if you are going for a tier 3 champion, scout the board like this. Let's say I wanted to get a tier 3 Elise, right? First, what you do is you say, hey, are there other people playing Elise right now? Yes or no? I'm going to get a keeper buff here. This is a keeper at the start of the combat. At start of combat. Wait, maybe. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just do this. At start of the combat, keepers grant themselves and all nearby allies a shield for eight seconds. That was a keeper. And then I put in another keeper, which gave me the synergy very strong so we now have a synergy going we now have uh the big the big items on the board i'm kind of kind of thinking that uh we go double here double sharpshooter for now just to like really power on so basically uh we have a really really strong lineup as of now we're just going straight for level nine so what did i say before if i wanted to tier three elise 
my best chance would have been to one be at the highest percentage for tier one which is now at 19 percent, so it's very low however if i had a blue champion that i wanted to try and tier two or three now would be or well, actually let's use green if i had a green uh level two champion that i wanted to tier two or tier three now would be the best time the highest percentage you can get to is 35 percent right so right now if i wanted to like max uh someone out a champion now is the time i could roll down or slow roll uh rolling down means you like roll 20 or 30 gold down or roll all the way to zero and try and tier three that unit slow roll means you always stay above 50 gold and and do a slow roll you just refresh 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 and, and when you get to 50 gold you stop so we are getting cultists all day i'm going to get that uh, I'm actually going to sell these because I don't need them. And right now we're in a very, we're in a kind of strong position. I actually don't know why this is like that. I'll be honest with you. Uh, let's do that. Much better, much stronger. And what else is there left to do? What do you do in mid game and what do you do in late game? One is you itemize. Certain items will impact the way you win or lose. For example, this, what I have here, is called a Guardian Angel. What this does is if I die, I come back to life. Very good against assassin comp teams, people that jump on you and try to uh, kill you straight away. It's very, very strong. Right now, um, he hasn't been touched, to be honest, so we're doing very well. Uh, also another little tip these sockets here are stacks of 10 gold so you, so you can actually see oh, I just got to follow you can actually see um, when the enemy team is at a certain amount of gold in between, in between 0 to 10 10 to 20, 20 to 30 30 to 40, 40 to 50 or 50 and above let's just see what I need here uh i would say that maybe we go bloodthirster oh no we can get cultist my apologies it's hard explaining the game and thinking this is our our the tier 5 cultist we need so we just got a massive piece for our synergy nine cultist is very very strong in this game um usually if i ever get cultist i'll just run it always uh like a cultist chosen i'll always run it so we actually do we have nine cultists now? Yo 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 yo. One, two, we have nine cultists. So I go one, two. Okay, let's uh level up here. I actually got nine cultists really quick, which is crazy. Let's go like that. Let's go like that. Let's um. Let's put Zephyr on you. So Zephyr, uh, when combat begins, aware of summons a whirlwind, and I whirlwinded this hero here, the Jin. I think I'm gonna get Cultus in straight away. Um, I just don't want to waste too much of my money. Yeah, this is really good. So I think once we get to, once we get to eight, we can go the cultist so let's go up and now we go like this and who are we missing and there we go wait oh my apologies I was thinking, yo, what's going on here? So there you go. We have nine cultists at 4-6. What does that do? It gives me Supreme Overlord Galio. Let's take a look. He's a big, bad mofo. Boom. From this, we're definitely going to be finishing top four in the game. How, and that actually brings me to the point of uh, a one big tip, I guess. Am I going to lose? 
I lost. Uh, one big tip of the game is basically knowing how the rank system works or how the LP system works. And what it is, is if you come top four, one, two, three, or fourth, you will gain LP. If you come fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, you will actually lose LP. So some games you are going to lose. You just can't help it. There is a, a bit of an RNG factor to this game, but you'll see good players generally on a more of like a 70, 80% level always become like top four and be very, very strong. So that's just how the cookie crumbles with TFT. Um, what we are trying to do now is go level nine. Level nine requires 80 gold. So as you go up in levels, as you go up in levels, you actually, um, it, the, there is more gold required for you to, to level up. So as you can see, I'm going to the last level. You can only be on nine levels, but it costs me 80 gold, right? To actually get there. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling down to 50 or as close as I can to 50 because when you buy XP, it goes in increments of four. I only have three gold, uh, so I can't. If I go do it again, it'll take me down to 49. So we're trying to stay above 50. Guys, to be honest with you, uh, like that is really TFT in, a, in a, like a very quick nutshell. If you do want to watch the rest of this game, uh, there you go basically i'm right now i'm gonna be going for uh, another level and then tearing up my units or leveling them up i'm still trying to do that now but i'm just really trying to go nine not a lot of people are gonna go nine this game uh so that's my aim even though i'm losing health uh that's the goal because why i want to get this jinx in to give me the sharpshooter buff because my carry is a sharpshooter so that is the goal guys thank you so much if you wanted to continue watching please do that is my guide to tft yes it can be a bit lengthy but it is what it is when you need to learn the game i hope i explained everything to you uh as perfect as as possible uh please in more as a bit of a rundown in all situations early game use a carousel for your items to get good item scripts know your synergies download the application blitz gg make sure that you understand what comps are strong for certain metas read the patches when they come through very important a lot of things get buffed a lot of things get nerfed it always happens so guys enjoy the rest of the content if you want to watch the game i'll be going through the game and what i'm doing now but that's it for the tft tutorial how to understand to play tft in 2020 set four i hope that helps you one actually last thing you can sell a chosen champion and it will activate this again so if i sold this uh i would i would get uh another opportunity to find another chosen champion it can be any synergy any trade it doesn't matter but because i'm on nine cultists it would be silly for me to do this i wouldn't be able to get any other chosen cultists bar this so yeah, let's go through the content now. Thanks for watching, by the way. I hope that helps you with the tutorial. Uh, so there's... See, one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got Sharpshooter, Colt. So the Cultus is me, Warlord, Mystic, Divine Duelist. Interesting. Make sure we're going to line this up properly. We're doing well because uh, we haven't like tier two our units. That uh, you very strong. You very strong. Okay, here we've got an item to choose. Spear surgeon. End of Justice, Spirit Surgeon, Trap Core. We're going to put the Spirit Surgeon on the Jinx. She's really good with quick regenerative mana. 
um, regeneration. So right now we really want to start. I'm going to push up here and get this in, get that in. I'm going to roll down to 30, maybe, maybe 20. Need to get a bit stronger. Let's do that. Let's use the Nico on our carry. And let's see how we go. I'm going to move my shroud next. Uh, if it's not hit. Oh, that's all right. stay above 20 each time hmm that's a good piece right let's get that let's look at let's scout them we just verse this player so we're either gonna verse this or I think we verse that soon find out If we don't, it's, uh, okay. So that's good. So now we're going to deem mana. Boom. Slow down the mana of there. His key. Chopping through them. Chopping through them. Oh, that's really good my zillion let's take a look at this seras is basically a blue buff it gives me a lot of mana regeneration i'm going to put this straight on zillion because what zillion does is he places a protective time rune on two of my allies with the lowest health including himself if it was him uh when they would die they actually resurrect after three seconds returning to combat with 700 health and shedding all negative effects after resurrecting they have 75 bonus attack speed as well very good let's hope to get yeah cool we're gonna get um uh, let's sell that roll 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 get two two of that Let's, let's just hold it 10 for now. Uh, we're actually going to verse this guy, I think. Let's see. It's actually quite a close game, so it's pretty good. Yep. That's the right person. How's people's economy looking like, though? That's the key question. The stage is set. Uh, wow. Radio. So we didn't really hit anything there. Just for the... I'm just going to go try and get Zillion. I'm going to try and go tier 3 zillion. I don't think I'll get it, but who knows. We are absolutely shredding at the moment. Absolutely shredding. Nope, we didn't get 
Let's see. Let's scout again. I think we verse this guy now. Right? Is it this guy? I think this will be our best. Let's do this. Beautiful. Nice. Is he out? Oh, that's good. That uh, is very good. Uh, spatula is not going to do much for us. I would say we get an item for our zillion, which will most likely be gargoyle just to tank. Uh, we could put it on Aatrox as well, actually. Not finding any more zillions, unfortunate. Hot again for each enemy targeting. No, well, let's put it on our tank for our front line. We're versing one more guy. We're going to move our Elise here. If you don't know what this item does, when combat begins, a beam shoots uh, ahead that delays affected enemies first spell cast, increasing their max mana by 33%. So we're going to move it there just before the round starts. And what's going to happen is... Boom. And the Zephyr comes through. So... should get one more and uh gg i'd say oh, i really wanted to get tier three zillion because what he does is he if you can see here what happens to the next he revives 10 targets 10 now because i have shroud here i think i think he's gonna move his players over here so i'm gonna bank on that Maybe he's new. Oh, he didn't move it. Okay. Well, that's GG, guys, I think. Maybe he's just given up. GG, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've helped you learn how TFT works. Please like, subscribe, comment. It would really help me. I'm trying to grow the channel. I appreciated it a lot. It's your boy, Wolfpack Gaming. My name, Mars Wolf, of course. Thank you so much, guys. It's a victory on the tutorial video. I'm so glad for that. Learn the game. Enjoy it. It's really fun. God bless. Take it easy. And I appreciate you watching this. And no matter how long you watched it for. Take care, guys. Thank you. Peace.